Hey everybody, welcome back to the Splatoon Japanese art book. It is your buddy Joshi here, and we are hanging out and going through this very fancy, fancy guide. Um, so I'm assuming you've already checked out part one, um, but if you haven't already, the link for that will be in this video's description. So we've looked at half of this book, and we're going to look at the other half right now. We left off at the level designs. Okay, I think we found it now. There we go. All right, we're gonna check out some of the level design in the game. So this concept art right here appears to be an example of what the one player hub world would look like, because there's Captain Cuttlefish I apologize if that's not his real name. I've forgotten it. But that sounds right, so we'll see. Yep, this is um, just some very basic sketches of what the overworld could look like. It's kind of a rundown place. There's his little stand. <laughs> I like how he's got um, satellite dishes on it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so this is some pretty crazy stuff. This is, um, early examples of the single player. Let me get a nice zoomed in shot of these. Oh, well, I guess I don't really need to. They're pretty obvious. I love those, the little tuna cans for the power-ups. Those are obviously different variations. So right now what we're looking at is just some of the stuff that you would see in the background. And I think it's pretty great. I mean, look at the, the detail they went on just for something in the background. Yeah, it's a real shame that this has not been released in the rest of the world. Oh wow, that is a really cool bit of artwork. How great would it be? How great would it be if they made like a Saturday morning cartoon show of Splatoon and it kind of followed the story of the single player stuff? And the reason I say that is because this definitely looks like it could be it could be a screenshot of the show. Oh wow. I'm gonna get uh, I don't think that that's not even a boss in the game really. I think there's something sort of similar to that, but same with this. This is an example of the stamp boss. But I want to get you guys a nice zoomed in shot of this. So. This is uh, some pretty, pretty fantastic artwork there for the final boss. I'm gonna get back out here. There we go. Another example of a big battle happening. Okay, so this is neat. 
This is a look at the actual maps that you would do battle in. So this one is called Negito Negitoro Coal Mine. And I don't know. Oh, so this one... Yeah, that one is in the game. I forget the name of it, though. Some very different early artwork. See, um... Let's zoom in. This has got a lot of little details, so I think you guys will want to see them better. So, this is incredible. Instead of jumping into teapots to warp around the world, they originally thought you would jump into urinals, which they, they eventually scrapped. That's kind of strange. And uh, even, even just stuff like this, to me, is really cool to see. Just how they were doing little doodles for, you know, the brick walls and, and what the walls and tiles on the floor would look like. And in there we see a bunch of signs and posts and stuff. I think it's really special that they would put all that together in a, in a book to show people. Because generally, you know, this kind of stuff just gets put into folders and put into file cabinets. So to share this kind of stuff is really neat. I, um, we got three flags here. And as you can see, they're all being held up in different ways. One of them is on a cylinder block. The other is on a log. And that final one just seems to have some wire wrapped around the base. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. The waving, the flailing arm tube squids. <laughs> so this is um this is referred to as Bass Park, but I'm pretty sure this is um Urchin Underway or Urchin Underground. I ca I can't remember the names of things. I'm so sorry. I um I actually ban myself from playing Splatoon in the winter because to me it's such a summer game that playing it in the winter just didn't feel right in the same way that I would not play like Super Mario Sunshine in the winter. So some people might think that's kind of weird but it actually makes the game feel that much more special when I finally get around to playing it again, which will be like May 1st. So yeah, this is the, uh, the Kelp Dome. I remember that name. This is a really good level. I like the Kelp Dome a lot. Showing us a lot of different things here, all the different ramps and steps and fans and generators and all sorts of stuff. We get to see some of the plant life. Oh wow, there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> I like the different, the different fruits they designed here are neat. They kind of took real life fruits but made him a little bit more strange and alien to us. And I'm sorry, but I do need to zoom in on something in this page because it's too amazing not to show you up close. So, right here. <laughs> the boy and girl squid eating blue watermelon. 
I love that. These are really neat fruit designs. And since I'm zoomed in, I might as well show you guys over here. It just goes to show you um, all the different ideas that go into a good game. I mean, I think it's clear that Splatoon has a very, very talented team behind it. And I hope they get to work on many different games. So this is a, a level that they're calling the parking lot, but I believe this is the one that's between the two towers. It's a really, um, it's a really unique level. I like it. It's very high up. This looks like it is Camp Cuttlefish or Camp something. And again, I'm sorry if I'm getting the names wrong for things, I don't remember. But this is definitely the camp. Ooh, I really like the totem poles of the squids. Little tires hanging in there. I'm not even sure. It's a lot of this stuff that's really cool. I don't even think they used. Very, very cool. Look at that. I love it. Just ideas of things that you would see in the distance. Crane. Barrels. Those look like the three barrels from Jaws. Yeah, this is definitely, definitely a must-have art book. Got the, the two symbols that appear above the plaza. Ooh. So we got various different targets. So in the game, I believe, yeah, these are the actual targets in the game. We've got some alternate ones. So you can see there was a basic target. There was seaweed. There were balloons. A little squid on a post. Strange little squid board. There was, uh, what are those called? Those plants? Are they anemones? Anemone. I don't know how to pronounce them, but it looks like if you shot it, it would grow. A clam. If you shoot the clam, or the clam opens, then you have to shoot the target. Puffer fish. Really neat. Up here we see some different types of ramps that I guess would have appeared in the skate park. It's a shame they didn't use those. I like the one with Callie and Marie on it. These are all the various um, scrolls that you can collect. I don't know if I ever did that. I don't think I did. I didn't get them all. It's kind of neat artwork though. It's also neat because if you collect the scrolls, it tells sort of a lot of the backstory. Like um, number 27 here, if I recall correctly, more or less, um, suggests that Judd was a human's cat, like a pet who was frozen in time. 
which is very strange. Ooh. So these pages are going to show all the different stickers, all the emblems that you would find when playing. Um, I'm sure if you've played Splatoon, a lot of these are very familiar to you. You see them stuck all over the place. I'm really surprised that Nintendo has not made a sticker book with all of these. I'd buy that in a heartbeat. I like this one. It's like a construction symbol. Yeah, oh, I love all these symbols. The little Octorock, the lock design. <laughs> That's great. I like that one. Yeah, maybe I need to scan this and then print these out on sticker paper. Make my own stickers. I actually did, um, I redesigned a lot of these before I had the guidebook. I made them in Photoshop, so I would have really high quality images of all the emblems, because I want to make stickers of them. So over here, this is kind of neat. You can see the little shoe boxes. I guess these are the boxes the shoes would come in. This is album artwork. <laughs> Callie and Marie. That's like artwork for Callie and Marie Galaxy. Super Callie and Marie Galaxy. This is the textures for the Miiverse um, box that you would see in Inkling Plaza. <sighs> Got some Splatfest designs. Oh yeah, here we go. So, these are the t-shirt designs for um, all of the Splatfests up until the art book came out. So, we've got cats versus dogs. I was on Team Dog. Roast marshmallows or roast hot dogs? I said roast marshmallows. North Pole or South Pole? Uh, I think that was a European Splatfest. I would have said North Pole. This was a Japanese one. It was grasshoppers versus ants. I would have picked I would have picked ants because if a bug's life taught us anything, it's that grasshoppers are evil bullies. I think grasshoppers actually won that in Japan. This was messy versus tidy, you know, like neat and clean versus messy. I would go with neat and clean. Rock music versus pop music. I would have went with pop music. I don't really like heavy metal rock. Some more t-shirt designs here. I'm not really sure why. Maybe these are the DLC t-shirts. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't think they are, actually. Ooh, I like the page on the right here. That's like great stuff there. Basically all the textures for Octoroks and bloopers. Hmm. <laughs> Now these are icons that you would find in the game. 
There's the little loading squid animation. You get to see all the frames there. Icons for when you're being talked to in the single player. This is a really cool page over here. Shows all the little upgrades. <laughs> and then we got some controller icons. And I don't know what these are. All the different splat, promotional splat images. These are storyboards for all the animations. <laughs> Just little quick sketches. Pretty cute. Cute little quick sketches. So there was a um, there was a little promotional video I think for a Splatoon when the first Splatfest occurred. It was put online, and I guess this is showing you all the frames of animation in that. Oh my goodness! This is labeled Twitter. This is uh, referring to all the Twitter posts. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, you know, a book is extensive when it's actually showing you the Twitter posts that they made about the game. It tells you the date. It tells you what the tweet was. I guess the Amiibo were first shown off uh, April 3rd of 2015, maybe. I remember there was a Splatoon uh, Direct, and it was pretty great. Got me very excited for the game. On April 10th of last year, we learned about some a new costume, a new hat for the me games on your 3DS. Little bonus games that you can play on the gamepad. <laughs> I like these guys' designs. I like him the most. His name is apparently Doctor, which is kind of strange. He does not look like a doctor. So I really, really like this artwork. Um, like I said, I haven't really looked at all this book before, but I did look at these sketches before. And I mean, can't you just picture... Can't you picture this as being like what an animated show would look like? Like a Saturday morning Splatoon cartoon. Splatoon cartoon. <laughs> oh man, I love the style of these sketches. I had to zoom in on that guy. That is incredible. <laughs> I love it. And then here we've just got the pencil, pencil drawings of the box art. So 
some more pencil artwork. So this is very neat. These are early designs for characters. And I think specifically, these are early designs for Callie and Marie. This is a very weird one. I'm gonna zoom in here. So, on this page, we've got a whole bunch of really awesome zapfish designs. I love it. I love this one. He looks so crazy. I love it. <laughs> that one's cute, too. And then down here, we've just got a whole mess of them. I mean, look at that. Would you have ever thought that the artist made that many sketches just to make the zapfish? Those are all great, too. And then over here, just some more, more designs of canisters and barrels. I get to see the crab lock. You can see they're even making the little logo, the text logo. So this looks like an olive flounder or a dab they were drawing for a logo. And some little squiddies over there. I love that that sketch of Judd. Hmm. Just a bunch of early sketches here. So we'll zoom out again. Show you this is a, um, it's like a, not a comic, but what would it be called? A manga? Manga of Splatoon? We're not going to be able to read any of it, but it's kind of cute to just look at. I don't know if these were actually in some magazine in Japan or if these were made by the developers of the game. It doesn't look like it's all that well drawn, so I'm going to assume this is just stuff that some of the team did in their off time or just for the fun of it. Some very, very strange stuff. <laughs> very strange little enemy wearing a trench coat pretending to be all normal. Yeah, I don't know. If we could read any of this, we'd be able to tell if it's well written. Oh, the boy's not, his hair is not up in a ponytail there. <laughs> That's some pretty great, some pretty great artwork right there. He looks crazy. Mm. Some fun little, some fun little Judd stuff going on there. Looks like the, the little little panel on the right there seems to be taking place at a time when Judd had a human owner. 
long time ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, to the right there are some humans. So, I don't know, maybe there was a, a Splatoon column in Famitsu or something where there were comics. These are kind of cute. <laughs> Definitely a different style of animation. Or, drawing. And that, boys and girls, is going to do it for the Splatoon art book. <laughs> and I wanted to end on a zoomed in shot of that, because that's pretty fantastic. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that this helped you relax. Hopefully it showed you a lot of cool stuff about Splatoon. And uh, maybe you're thinking of checking out the art book yourself. You can find it on play-asia.com, playasia.com. And uh, I think it's about $40, which is a little pricey, but it's a pretty great book. So yeah, until next time, I will see you guys later.